Hello, my sewing friends. This is my sewing room and I am Jen and I am really happy that you're here. I have a couple things to tell you about, actually four things. Makes. Believe it or not, I've actually been making things. Ah, the thing we do on these channels, these sewing channels, is we make stuff and then we talk about it, don't we? Uh, two things for me, one thing for Jenna and one thing for Mia. I will start with the thing for Mia because Ugh, it was like pulling teeth to get her to take a photo. Why was this hard? I don't know. I asked her like a hundred times and she'd go, well, I don't have time and I can't not excuse after excuse. And I finally said, all right, you know what? I have a YouTube channel and I like to talk about the things I make. And if you can't take a picture of it, then I'm not going to make you anything anymore. No, nope, not doing it. Well, she ended up being able to take a picture all of a sudden. Oh, she sent me a whole slew of them, so I'll show you. Anyway, I made her a jumpsuit, Vogue 1591, and uh, this is a beautiful jumpsuit. I did it out of this suiting. It is green, sage green suiting, which I found at Joann's. I made a few changes to this pattern. It's a fairly straightforward pattern, but it is fully lined. Uh, because it's backless. I used um, the suiting and then I used a wide black grosgrain ribbon. She said it, she thought it would be great to trim it in black. So I used a black lining also, but I did not line the pants and you're supposed to. So I made a few changes in that respect. And if you do that on a backless garment, you have to kind of figure out how you're gonna uh, finish that top edge of the pants. So. That was a little bit challenging, not, not really too much. Um, it does have an invisible zip going up the back. It's a pretty straightforward pattern. It's not difficult at all. Um, but if you're gonna follow the pattern exactly, you should line the pants because that alleviates that problem of having to finish that back edge. So anyway, turned out beautiful. She looks amazing um, and it was easy to do and um, I, she is a jumpsuit fan, so I have several jumpsuit patterns, and now that she's finally decided that she can actually send me a photo of what it is that I made for her, then I may be making her more jumpsuits. We'll just have to see. I don't know. I may get all fickle about it. Probably not. Okay, and then for Jenna, um, she really liked McCall's 7740, and she liked View... D, which has three ties that go up the back. She liked the pattern, but she wanted more of a circle skirt. So I used this quilting cotton that I found at Joann's. Now this is the top fold, so you can tell it's printed on the diagonal. So I thought, ooh, that'll be cool. You know, it'll give me a cool effect. She did want a circle skirt. And I was able to get it about half circled. It's very flared. This is 45 wide, so I just worked with that. So invisible zip up the back. So it's very similar to the jumpsuit I did. It's got um, just really a simple dolman sleeve. Anyway, that turned out really well. She looks so cute in it and she really likes it. And she said, thank you for making me pretty dresses. And I thought, oh my gosh, I will make you a hundred more because she sent me photos like, I don't know, a week and a half later. The other thing, do I sound a little upset about that? I'm really, I'm, I'm kind of over it. <laughs> I promise, I'm over it. I will never mention it again. Okay, and then I've been making nightgowns for myself. The first one is Butterick 6838 from 2001. And it's okay. I made it out of a pink shirting that I found at Joann's last summer. I got it for a steal of a deal. And it's okay, but it's printed on the horizontal. So um, I wish that it had, my hair is falling out. I wish I had found it printed. On, I wish I had cut it so that it was printed on the um, vertical stripe. But I don't know. I, you know, in the end it's a nightgown, so who cares? This is not my favorite. I did make view B and then I used some um, eyelet trim that I had in my stash because I have like thousands of yards of that stuff. I don't, how did I get thousands of yards of that? I don't know. Anyway, so I did that. Um, I'm not terribly happy with the way it turned out just because I think it's user error. <laughs> or, 
you know, it's not the fault of the pattern. It's just not a terribly attractive nightgown. And uh, I don't know. It, it. I think I would like it better if I didn't have this one to compare it to. This is Butterick 5061, and this is from 2007. It's a historical pattern. And um, I made, you see, now this was interesting because I used, again, eyelet trim from my stash. Now this has tucks going down the front, and so it gives it some interest in shape, and that makes it pretty. And on the bottom, it's got a tuck that goes around the top of the hem. I used, again, an eyelet, um, not a gathered eyelet, but a flat eyelet trim on the hem, which is so pretty because it's got some blue in it, and I used this blue shirting that had a little bit of lycra in it um, that I actually got at Walmart, believe it or not, three yards for eight dollars I think it was what a find but um, I I it, I didn't realize it calls for these tucks but they're really not pin tucks they're more like they're like a half inch wide so if I were gonna do this again I might I might just do actual pin tucks you know I have a pin tuck foot for my machine you probably do too um, but just the really narrow ones and put more in than what this calls for. But oh, that just makes it so pretty. It really does. Okay, so the problem with this pattern is it calls for three and a half inch lace trim to go around the sleeves. I did that. And then it calls for one inch, or no, one and a half inch lace trim to go around the neckline. So I had some of that too, both eyelet trim. The one really wasn't eyelet, it was like a cotton ruffle trim. Uh, similar to eyelet, but just no eyelet. And so I got it done, and because the lace is three and a half inches, it just stuck out like wings. And I thought, no, I don't like this at all. Well, the way you construct it is you put the eyelet on, or the trim on, and then you use bias binding to go over top of the trim and finish the inside. Same with the neckline. And so I tore all of it out. And I thought this would be much prettier with like a six and a half inch uh, lace trim that would give you more of like a drop, you know, I mean, it would look more like a sleeve. Well, I decided I had some extra fabric and I, I was playing around with my ruffler and I made this really tight ruffled trim and I thought maybe that'll work. Well, the problem was I made it too wide. I, I made it like an inch and a half wide and I should have not ruffled it quite as much as I did. So I, I left the lace, uh, the cotton lace that was on the neckline, but I put that uh, extra fabric that I'd ruffled around the armholes. And I thought, okay, yes, this is good. And I slept in it, in the nightgown. And then I got up the next morning. Now, granted, <laughs> you never look terrific in the morning anyway, but I looked in the mirror and I thought, I hate this thing. And it's so pretty. That blue, I love that baby blue color and all those tucks down the front. And I thought, all right, I gotta tear this apart again. So, so I did. And I knew I had some very narrow lace, eyelet lace. It's only, uh, I think it's maybe three quarters of an inch wide. So when you sew it on, it ends up being um, only about a half inch that sticks out. So I took off the neckline trim because I didn't like that either. <laughs> and I took off all that ruffled extra that I put around the armholes and I put the eyelet on and it was perfect. Now it's perfect. I love that nightgown. And in fact, I need to make probably at least one more, if not two. So um, I like it a lot better, and I love the robe on this pattern. I should make that too. Yeah, all the pin tucks, oh, beautiful. Anyway, so did that one. I like it a lot better than I like the this one. Both Butterick patterns, but um, you know, the other one is more of a, I don't know, standard nightgown, I don't know. I've got probably 20 more nightgown patterns in my stash, and I, I don't know, I have a look. So anyway, those are my makes for recently and uh, let me know if you've made any of these patterns especially if you've made either of these or if you've done something lately that had um, like a backless situation going on and how you finished that top edge of the skirt let me know or the top edge of the pants let me know how you did that yeah i would love to chat with you about that so yeah I think that's it for now for me. I will be back with more makes at some point. Who knows when that'll be? Probably the next time I get stuff done. <laughs> so that's it for now for me, and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.